Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Big Brother 21 postseason coverage. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and with me today on this uh, this season-long live feed update, I think is, is what we might call it. I don't know. Uh, I've got the magnificent Cliff Hogg. How you doing, Cliff? Howdy, guys. I'm doing all right. I'm trying to decompress a little bit from time in that house and, and get rid of some of those stresses I had in there. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been what like a, a little over a week now since you got out. How's yeah. everything going? Uh, it's doing all right. I'm uh, here back at home, so I got my wife with me and going out and occasionally be occasionally being recognized on the streets, which is kind of surreal for me. But I'm still having dreams in the middle of the night that I'm still in that house and getting called out by the uh, diary rooms. And uh, so yeah, it'll take a little time, but I had fun with it. But yeah. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> um, you you went. Uh, you, did you stay a little bit longer in LA before you went home? Uh, just a little bit. We had the uh, the finale was on Wednesday. We had a mm -hmm. cast party on Thursday night. I had my family, my wife and kids, mom uh, with me, and so we hung around. Got back Sunday from LA, so we we did the little tourist thing while we were out there a little bit. Uh, yes, very fun. Uh, you you cho chose not to go to Vegas. No, I uh, thought about it, but eh, I'll let the younger ones do do the uh, the dancing and the raving and all of that. I'd rather spend the time with my family, and uh, yeah, we had a blast. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, the the se the season's over. It's uh, you 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 made it almost all the way to the end. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but before you came on the season, you were a big fan. You you'd watch yeah. the live feeds. You listened to us. You were uh, absolutely yeah. Um, so uh, can you tell me like what was the process for uh, for applying for casting for all of that? Like, whoa, did you did you did you think you ever had a shot of getting on the show? You know, I feel a little guilty because I've heard people talk about so so much work they do to get on the show. I just happened to see a Twitter feed from Haley from last season saying that it was an open casting call here in Houston. Uh, my wife and I were already planning to go to a big barbecue cook-off at the Houston Rodeo that day. So I was dressed up, had the hat on, and we said, ah, let's just stop by this bar and see who's lined up. And when we got there, I think it was about 10 minutes before the line closed, and I said, eh, why not? I'll try out for it. Got in the line. Everyone laughed at me the whole time I was walking to the back of the line. The, Here comes the old guy that doesn't stand a chance. And I didn't have anything prepared. I just started talking, and next thing you know, here I am. I'd never applied, tried out before. It was just a lightning in a bottle type situation. And now I, I always dreamed about being on this show, but I didn't really think it would ever happen. Yeah, uh, but uh, but but you made it on. Um, made it on. You you sent me a message on LinkedIn saying that you were going to shout me out. Yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because at that point, I didn't know if I was going to make it on or not. But I thought, hey, I might as well start preparing. Obviously, I'm huge fans of y'all and, and the podcast. And uh, I figured I was going to do some shout outs once I got out, got in the house if I made it. And funniest thing, that's what I did. That's what you did. Uh, did you send anybody else any LinkedIn messages or was it just me? Just you. Just oh. you. You're, you're special, Taryn. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you, Cliff. Um, so you you got on the season. You enter you enter the house. And I remember preseason you were talking about like, uh, I just I hope that there's not like a big alliance that forms and a big group uh, that makes it hard for me to, to get in with uh, with everything that's happening in the house. Um, a bit unlucky on that on that regard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my worst nightmare in a lot of ways. I went in saying, I don't want to be kicked out of the house the very first day like some of the past older house guests, and I don't want a huge alliance to form that doesn't include me. And after day one, guess what? I had both things kind of starting to happen to me. Mm. Um, so uh, so that's uh, that. Right, right away, you enter the house, and there's the uh, camp director twist yes. um you decided to volunteer to try to become camp director what was behind that thought process well as i said I, i've watched enough seasons i know that uh the older person in the house typically has a little bit bigger target on their back and i was worried about that and so when the opportunity came up to volunteer as camp director you know, 
it sounded like a good opportunity, but there are also some hazards with it. But I thought if I'm going to go home this first day, I'm not going to go home without having tried everything possible to survive in this house. So I was willing to take the risk even before knowing good or bad what that camp director position meant. I was going to do everything I could to fight my way through that house. Yeah, uh, but it did not work out. You did, it didn't seem to have much support. There was a lot of support early for Jess, um, yeah. but then it all kind of shifted over to Jackson. Did you just kind of let that happen, or were you really trying to fight for votes? Uh, you know, I was trying to fight for votes, but it seemed obvious pretty quickly. As you said, it seemed like Jess was was the person who was getting the majority of the votes. At the very last minute, it, it went back over to uh, to Jackson or Mickey. I still thought I was good. We actually, the four people who were running for camp director met, I don't know if it was in a storage room or where, and kind of said, look, let's watch out for each other. Regardless of who wins, we all volunteered. Let's let's see if we're, we can keep each other safe because of it. So I really was thinking that even if I wasn't the one who got the camp director position, that, that I still had whoever was camp director watching out for me. That turned out not to be so much the case as, as I discovered. Yeah, uh, there was there was talk about um, that. I remember the feeds had like a brief leak uh, at the, at the start where Christy was talking with uh, with Nicole a little bit, um, and she had mentioned that uh, that Jackson had made a deal with the other camp director yeah. volunteer people uh, that 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 you guys would all be safe with each other. Yeah, that's that was my understanding. So. Even though I didn't get the position, I was still thinking, it's okay, I still have someone watching my back and I should be good with this. Uh, but, you know what, that's maybe maybe not the last time that, that Jackson wasn't quite honest with uh, with what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, right off the bat, it, it did it did appear that uh, that Jackson was going to have a reputation as a, as a bit of a, a liar. Um, yeah. But uh, but that, that, I guess, shifted a little bit. Um, so, uh, so ultimately, Jackson becomes the first camp director. Uh, do, do you prefer Jackson or Mickey or Mickey or Jackson, a.k.a. Mickey? Yeah, I, I typically was calling him Mickey more so in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, either one works. But yeah, you'll you'll hear me probably say Mickey more so than anything else. Yeah. Um, so uh, so Jackson becomes camp director. He decides to put you, Jess, uh, Kemi, and David as the banished people. Um, you must not have been very happy about that. No, I wasn't wasn't happy at all. I got a little bit worried because uh, right after we came back inside, I mentioned to David. I said we're good, right? Jackson said that that we're all covered. And David said, well, that's not really what I heard. And that kind of caught me off guard because I thought we had an agreement, but David didn't seem to, to have the same opinion. Once that happened, I, I really started getting worried that I probably was going to be one of the ones that was going to be put up. Uh, and when I saw that squirrel heading my direction, I, I, I knew what was getting ready to happen. Mm. <laughs> um, I forgot about the squirrel. Yeah, no, I've, I'll never forget about that squirrel. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you ultimately though, were the first person out. So, uh, you, you managed to survive. You managed to not be the, uh, the night one evicted person. Yes. Um, but it was David that left ultimately. Uh, were you happy that it was David that left? Uh, if you, if you could choose, would you have chosen him to go of those other three or did you not really have much of an opinion yet? I didn't have much of an opinion at that point because it was so early in the game. I hadn't really had a chance to, to talk to anyone. It was interesting. We were all lined up. We couldn't see anything in front of us. And uh, I will say I was probably most surprised that it was David because he seemed so athletic uh, compared to, to certainly Jess and, and myself. Uh, but while we were getting ready to start that competition and we we're standing there, uh, David was, you could hear him just really getting revved up and ready to go in the competition. Uh, in fact, at one point he said, if if I, I'm getting back in that house and I'm going to stir some stuff up when it happens. And as soon as Julie said go, I heard him take off at a full sprint and then I heard him crash into a wall or a tree stump or, or something. So, uh, yeah, I know he was he very much wanted back in that house. And uh, yeah, so it surprised me a little bit that, that he was the one that actually was was not coming back in. Uh, I, obviously, I was the first one in. 
And then I waited around and uh, Kimmy came back and then it took quite a bit longer. And I really was expecting to see David, but, but then here comes Jess as the, the final one of the three that got back in the house. Yeah. Uh, it must've been a big relief uh, to, to know that you were safe. I was, uh, I was incredibly happy. I, I was sitting there all the time saying, just don't be the first guy. I don't go out on day one. I haven't even had a chance to sleep in the house, to see the HOH room, all the things that I was looking forward to. So yeah, when I cr crashed through that little door and suddenly all the house guests are surrounding me saying congratulations, it, it was a personal point to me that I had proven, uh, you know, at least round one, I'd proven that I belonged in the house and, and I wasn't going anywhere. Yes. Uh, so then you get to the HOH competition. Um, Christy is going to win. Yeah. Uh, it's shortly after that, you know, some alliances have been forming, you know, Bella, Jack and Jackson were a thing and they had formed out, branched out into a six. And then later after Christy won to, uh, an eight as eventually they call themselves grateful. Um, what, what were you doing at this time? Uh, were you trying to involve yourself in things or were you trying to like take it slow? Like what was your game plan here? I think missing some of the, the first day uh, because I was banished and all that, I was still trying to learn people's names, it seems like, to, to some degree. Uh, but no, really, I started seeing that alliance forming fairly early. Uh, as soon as I was banished, I had approached Jessica and Kimmy and said, look, obviously, maybe we're, we're the lower people on the totem pole. See if we can watch each other's back and, and maybe protect each other as much as possible. Ovi and I hit it off at the very beginning and we were really best buds. And so we were saying, man, we got to take care of each other. So, yeah, I feel like I was starting to create some relationships with the people that I recognized as not being in that that bigger alliance just to see if we could fight against them and survive a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's a big group forming. You seemed to be getting in fairly good with them. Uh, did you recognize that there, like how early was it that you recognized that there was a group that was in power? I know it wasn't until a little bit later that you really solidified that it was an eight person group with yeah. particular people. I, uh, and I haven't seen the episode yet. So, so forgive me if I'm off on my days a little bit, but it seems like after just a couple of days, I could start seeing uh, people who were hanging out with each other, maybe a little bit of the, the showmance is starting to form and uh, just seeing who was, who was in the rooms talking late at night. Uh, I know they sat in the bathroom one evening and, and had long discussions. Uh, and I came in saying that I really wanted to go underneath the radar in the first half of this game, try to find an alliance that would accept me as kind of a loyal soldier, as a vote that, that they could count on. And so even though I saw this starting to form, I was trying to still get in with them and uh, and see if I could become a part of it. So even after I was banished, as soon as I got back in the house, I grabbed Jackson and said, look, this is water under the bridge. I don't hold anything against you for putting me up. I want to work with you and don't think that I'm coming after you just because you picked me for banishment. So I was trying to create some inroads within that group, uh, even as I saw it forming. Yeah, um, I know that uh, you pretty quickly formed a relationship with Nicole as well. I believe I believe it was the first night of feeds. Um, you talked to the cameras and uh, you mentioned that you had uh, a, 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 some sort of alliance or relationship yeah. with Nicole and that you really hoped it would uh, it would stick. Yeah, and it it did. I uh, there's a lot of decisions, good and bad, that that I made in that game, but. I've never regretted my decision to line up with, with Nicole and, and try to go through this game with her. Yeah. We, we actually, uh, it was, I think through Ovi that Nicole and I started talking together because, uh, as I said, Ovi and I were tight and I think Ovi was trying to work closely with Nicole. And as a result of that, she and I, I think it was actually over a bad game and game while I was trying to teach her how to play it, that we started talking about shared goals and strategies and such. And, uh, made a final two alliance fa fairly early, I think before those feeds even came, came on to start with. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Christie's HOH, she decides initially she wants to target cat, uh, and that you are going to be the pawn. Um, how did, how did that conversation go? Well, whether you're a pawn or the, the active target, you never want to go on the block. I had just survived banishment and now I'm learning that I'm going to, going to be on the block as well i wasn't happy and i wasn't sure if if cat really was the target or myself so 
I felt like once more I was going to have to fight to to stay in that house and do what I could. Yeah. Uh, it did seem, though, that it was fairly quickly that the target shifted to Kemi. Um, and that seemed to stem from Jack and Jackson, uh, that they were really pushing Christy uh, to backdoor Kemi. Um, and, uh, you know, part of that, I think, came from this supposed comment about, like, uh, cooking um and then also the fact that she had she had been one of the people that was banished and also bella had told uh you know jack and jackson that kemi had mentioned coming after them um but uh were you you were informed that that kemi was the backdoor target. you weren't informed no i i had no clue i uh, i learned later that that was the case and i did hear later that uh, they were upset because apparently Kimmy had said that she was going to come after them a little bit. But, yeah, I didn't have any clue as to any of that until really after that first eviction occurred. Yeah. Um, yeah, she had been – Kemi had kind of caught on a little bit that she might be in trouble. Nicole was uh, was a part of it as well. She had talked to Christy um, and tried to, to prevent Kemi from going on the block. Um, Christy was – uh, I she, Christy did talk with you a bit about feeling pushed by Jack, um, and uh, and how she didn't want to be too closely associated with him. Um, she was really, I think, st struggling in that that first week, uh, really feeling like she's she was going to make the wrong decision. Yeah, and some of that I heard uh, later on when I got HOH and Christy and I talked a little bit, and and that's when she kind of opened up that she had felt pushed by Jack a little bit. Uh, to put up Kimmy, and you know, obviously she ultimately chose Ovi, which Ovi and I were buds. I didn't especially like that either. But that early in the game, I was just happy that I was getting pulled off the block and I wasn't going home uh, week one. So I wasn't upset, but but I did hate to lose Ovi. And, and yeah, as far as the Kimmy that first that first eviction, I didn't I wasn't even aware of that until much later. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was it was actually it was Sam. Uh, you know. Uh, Christy had gone to Sam she, after she decided she wasn't going to backdoor Kemi. She had gone to Sam to say, hey, don't use the veto. Cat will be the one to go. Um, but Sam said, I, I really want to use it on Cliff, though. Um, and <laughs> it was it was in large part because of that that they were but christy was like ah, i know but i don't want to i don't want to have to put somebody else up in cliff's place and not send them home uh because then i'm making even more enemies yeah so i'd really prefer you didn't use it we just send cat home uh and that's when sam suggested well what about ovi um and she was like i ah, know you know what that works yeah, yeah we can make that work um and just like that and i had no clue on that now when i talked to christy later she told me she said oh I picked Ovi because after the activity, I just had a suspicion that Ovi was the one who probably had the power. And and I wanted to make sure there was one man and one woman up at all times. And therefore, once once uh, Sam pulled you off, I was very limited in who I could put up. And Ovi was just the only one left. I heard all the reasons, but I until you're telling me now, I hadn't realized that that, that whole discussion between Christy and Sam had taken place. But having said all that, Sam and I were friends, uh, the two the two dads in the group uh, in of the house guest, and so I felt like we had a little bit of a connection, and certainly uh, am very appreciative that he pulled me off that block. Yeah, uh, you you seem to have a pretty good relationship with Sam throughout most of his time in the house, at the yeah. very least, um, and and it seemed like a lot of that was formed before the feeds even came on. Yeah, it was, and I think it was just a shared. Uh, the commonality with us both having kids, missing our families at home, and uh, and he was a great guy. Now I worried a little bit because it seemed like he and Nick were very close, and I was almost picturing a Brett and Winston type relationship from last season. Uh, but I had tried to get in with Nick a little bit and and wanted to work with him. In fact, I had voted for him as camp director just to show a little bit of uh, of loyalty to him and, and try to initiate something with that. And Sam as well, uh, I was friends with. I also knew that Sam was kind of outside that eight, but he was, seems like he was trying to do a lot like I was of, of trying to make some inroads and maybe get in with that group as well. So I felt like we had some shared objectives uh, during the first half of this game. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Christy eventually decides uh, it's going to be Ovi. Ovi goes up on the block. Um, yeah. Did you have 
did you did you try to uh to to think of ways that Ovi could stay? I know that like you talk to the cameras a lot this week and, and yeah. in future weeks about like you love Ovi, but you don't want to like fully stick your neck out for him. Um, how, how what was that struggle? Yeah, it was hard because uh, I didn't understand the dynamics enough of that game. I started seeing some alliances form, but it was so early I wasn't really sure. Uh, even as you point out, yeah. At the target, was Ovi the target? Uh, I was expecting the first part that it was probably going to be Cat and that Ovi was just up there as, as a replacement for me, another pawn. As we got later into the week, it started seeming like everyone was going to, to be voting against Ovi. And I felt so bad for Ovi because he kept, there were people like Jack kept saying, no, you're good. They're, you're absolutely good on this thing. We're not going after you. And I wasn't hearing that when I talked to people. Everyone's saying, well, it's nothing against Ovi, but we think we can get Cat out at a later time. It's no big deal. I, I tried to, to work with people and push them more towards Cat's direction, but it, it didn't really seem to be gaining that much traction. And you're right, at that point in time, I didn't want to push too hard and alienate anyone else that I was trying to get in with at the time. Uh, but it it was discouraging to see Ovi so excited thinking that he had the votes based on things that Jack was telling him, for example. And eventually I had to break it to him and said, Ovi, I, j I just don't think you got the votes. I'm not sure that it's going to go the way you want it to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you also uh, had a relationship with Jackson and uh, that had also sort of formed in the early days. Can you tell yeah. me about, about that? Yeah, it was uh, the whole idea I knew he was kind of forming up with this alliance, and I felt like that was my way to get in with that group. The other thing that I had said before I even came into the house was I wanted to try to align with someone that I felt was very strong that could be a bit of a, a target ahead of me. Uh, they could maybe win some challenges, keep me safe, but if anyone came after us, they would come after that person instead. And so it seemed like Jackson was, was a natural choice, even after he banished me. And that's one of the points I'd made to him of, it's water under the bridge. I'd learn, love to work with you. And I don't think anyone's going to suspect that you and I are working together, considering that you just got through banishing me and, and they won't necessarily expect it. So, yeah, I uh, and he seemed receptive to it. So I did approach him and, and try to get something going very early in the process. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel like where were you feeling at this point in time uh, like who did you feel like you had in the game and, and you could rely on and who did you feel like you maybe needed to target yeah uh, as far as who I had in the game they, they had my back definitely Nicole uh, Ovi now I, I saw that he's getting ready to go home so that maybe didn't mean as much but Ovi and Nicole uh, I thought Sam had my back I thought Nick had my back uh, and, and probably uh, Mickey as well. As far as who I wanted to target, as I saw this alliance forming and I saw the way people were talking about Jack, it became pretty obvious very early that he was the linchpin to this whole deal, uh, not just because of his competition skills, mental or physical, but just it was like a cult sometimes the way I heard Tommy and Christy and some others talking about Jack very early in the process. So from the very beginning, he he is who I viewed as as the top target that I wanted to get out of that house. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's a, there's a, a women's alliance that's forming <laughs> around this time. Yeah. Um, I don't think you heard about it until the following week, though, right? Yeah, I didn't hear about it until we started getting some of the fallout with Nicole and and some of that going on. But um, yeah. It, <laughs> In some ways, maybe that makes a little bit more sense to me now because, as I said, I had approached Kimmy and, and Jessica both and said, let's kind of watch each other's back maybe, and they said yes, but then neither one had really talked to me too much after that or, or talked too much game, and, and maybe it had something to do with, with this women's alliance that was trying to be formed, but yeah, that first week I was kind of oblivious to it. I didn't hear about that until a little, little bit later. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you uh, eventually Ovi is going to be uh, evicted here. Uh, you head into week two, and uh, this is when Camp Comeback is revealed to the house that uh, David's going to come back into the house, and Ovi is staying. Uh, how, how did you feel about this when you heard about it? I uh, I was happy. I felt so bad for Ovi when he got voted out. So. Uh, when the, the alarms went off and Julie said, hold on, wait a minute, 
Uh, and then we heard that that OV was going to stay in the house. I was overjoyed because I love the guy. I didn't want him going anywhere. I wanted him to get more experiences. Uh, when when David came running in, I wasn't sure what to expect with that because, as I said already, when we were waiting to start the banishment competition, he had said that he was going to really try to stir things up if he was to get back into the house. And he, I think he was just trying to play a little bit different game than I was. He wanted to stir things up. I was doing everything I could to try to incorporate myself into that that alliance and, and maybe make some inroads there. So I wasn't sure how he was going to impact the, the balance of, of the game and, and the house guests that were in there. But overall, I was happy to to uh, to have that twist announced just because it meant Ovi got to stay in the game. Were you uh, when 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 the twist was announced uh, outside the house when 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 I was talking about it I was like oh this is terrible for uh, <laughs> for the outsiders because it really discourages this alliance well, from turning on each other. Yeah, and I hadn't thought about that until a little bit later. That as long as everyone's still in the house and there, any one of the people who were in camp comeback could could come back obviously in, into the house. So. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about from that alliance about we can't do anything while while all of these people are here because we've got all these other folks. We don't know who's going to be back. And that was a part when it was a first announced that, that I hadn't thought of. But I, I do think it forced that that bigger alliance to pull together a little little bit tighter as long as there was a threat of someone coming back in and with them living right there in the house with us also. And we didn't know how they were going to come back into the house, whether it was some type of competition amongst themselves a bracket type deal or Ovi was convinced that because they were staying in the house with us that the house guests that were still in would have some kind of a vote or a say on on who got to come back into the house so there was a lot of uncertainty at that time and I think it caused a lot of people just to kind of pull in tighter and, and closer and not do anything too risky or drastic yeah um I mean, what we saw was that with Ovi staying, um, he he was still kind of under the assumption that, you know, Jack and, and Jackson were, were maybe working for him. And you and Nicole yeah. had to kind of be the ones to be like, Ovi, like they they were they were not with you. No, no, we. Uh, yeah, we, we told him a few times and I, I think it took a little while to, to sink in that they were not his his allies at that, at that point in time. Mm hmm. Um, so, uh, so Jack is the HOH and, uh, were, were you concerned about that at the, at this point? I, yeah, I was because I'd already been banished. I'd already been put up once and who's to say I wasn't going to, to get put up again. I wasn't real sure who their targets were going to be at that point. I still hadn't heard that there was any animosity with Kimmy, uh, from Jack. I, I wasn't really aware of that. Um, so, yeah, I, I was just at that point in time, I was saying, I don't care who it is. Just please don't be me this week. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is also like so. So Kemi and Jess are going to be nominated. Did you have a did you have a preference at this point between the two of them? Which one left? No, not really. I. Uh, um, Jess and I had had a little bit of a talk uh, just in that. You know, I was the older person. I, I felt like I was kind of representing old, older people. And Jess was a plus size model. And, and so she felt like she was representing kind of kind of the segment. And so we'd have some, some discussions with that. But as I said before, Emmy and Jess, neither one had really talked, uh, wanted to talk game with me. And, and I didn't feel a whole lot of, of connection with them uh, because of that. So no, I really, at that point, didn't care. It, it was more... Uh, who did the house want? And I wanted to just make sure I didn't alienate the rest of the house. Uh, and, and however that Alliance was going to vote. Would you, would you say that like at this point that you were, uh, that you had like a long-term strategy or that you were kind of just still hoping to survive like week by week? Yeah. During that second week, it, it wasn't so much a long-term strategy. It was just a matter of survive. Uh, my long-term strategy. I just didn't think an Alliance of eight people could last very long. So, in my mind, and I mentioned this later in the season to a few folks as well, in my mind, I was just going to try to survive through these first few weeks until that alliance eventually broke apart. And at that point, I could try to jump in and maybe find a side and work within that group. But it was all about being patient and just surviving week to week during those first few weeks. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so this week was a lot of, you know, Nick and Bella sort of starting to peel away from, uh, from grateful in a lot of ways, uh, as, as Kemi's on the block and Nicole was working closely with Kemi at this point, trying to keep Kemi in the game. Um, were you, is that something that you were aware of at the time or that you were working, uh, toward in any way? Not really. I, uh, I mean, I thought Nicole was close with Kimmy and Jess both, so I wasn't really sure that she was going one way or the other in terms of who she was trying to support. Uh, I did know that uh, there was starting to be a really, I, well, I was going to say, I didn't realize that week even that there was anything going on with Nicole working behind the scenes. I didn't really realize that until right after the nomination, week three, when Nick put me up. And immediately after, then things blew up. And that's when we had the whole issue with Nicole and everyone upstairs. But really that week before, I wasn't aware that Nicole was doing a lot behind the scenes or that Nick and Bella were having any friction with the rest of the group. Well, so <laughs> you and uh, you and Nicole um, started to, to get a little closer after the Women's Alliance thing was kind of blown up uh, yeah. because she couldn't really go to, uh, like Bella had, had had kind of rad the Alliance out. Um, Jess was, he was, was acting a little strange. Um, Kemi was on her way out the door. Um, and uh, it, it, it was, uh, she was kind of gravitating more toward you at this point because you were <laughs> one of the more steady Alliance members. And so this is when you, uh, Nicole and Ovi really started to connect more um, and, and start talking a lot you like to talk up uh you know where the uh um where backgammon uh and and the those games were um and you you guys would talk up there about uh about how there was like a power structure in the house and you did want to work toward um you know disrupting it sure absolutely yeah and it's funny because nicole and i had gotten close and formed the alliance but obviously ovi being still in the house we were working with him and hoping we could keep him in the house but we had to be careful even then because, as you mentioned, this power structure and Jack had called this. I don't know if it was officially a house meeting, but it sat around the table and said, none of us need to be talking to any of the camp comeback people at all. You know, does anyone have an issue with that? Well, no one's going to raise their hand when you're sitting around a table like that. And the HOH is, is saying, don't talk to any of the people that really rubbed me the wrong way. Ovi is my friend. I, I was going to continue to talk to him, but. Yeah, it did make me feel a little bit more nervous about talking to, to Ovi or Kimmy or David, any one of them, because here's this big alliance that's basically saying, if you talk to them, you may be the next target because we don't want you doing that. So it, it was a little uncomfortable at times. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you happen to have any uh, headphones that you could maybe plug in? We're getting a little bit of uh, feedback. I, I do, if you can just give me a couple of minutes. Yeah, absolutely. All right brief break in the in the podcast i apologize for that feedback uh did not hear it before we uh before we started um but uh, uh we are live on youtube right now uh for those in the chat who want to uh watch along and, and all of that uh feel free to ask questions we are going in order through the season so uh if your questions can be relevant to the week that we're talking about uh that would be uh that would be great um so uh interesting stuff Interesting stuff. Uh, we'll probably cut this out of the podcast, but I, uh, I actually just just finished talking with uh, with Tommy, so um, we'll have uh, plenty of interviews for you guys uh, as we as we move forward here. All right, Aaron, I'm going to try this. Let's see if it works. If not, if not, once again, I'm just proving that my voice is louder than it needs to be. <laughs> uh, it sounds it sounds good. Okay, good. Well, maybe that solved it. There we go. Uh, perfect. All right. So, let's uh, let's go. So, so yeah. So you, uh, uh, Nicole, and Ovi really started to come together here. Um, uh, you, you you guys did talk about uh, Nicole told you about guys about uh, how Jess and Bella were really you know starting to to go at it, um, and you guys were definitely hoping that at this point that uh, that Bella would continue to be outed for essentially having uh, you know this women's alliance and then also yeah. being part of another group and she was outing these things and she was being outed herself um, and that uh, you guys talked about trying to get Jack and and his group to turn on Nick and Bella at this point um yeah 
Yeah, and that was certainly uh, – I was looking for any way to create some division within that group and, and break them up. Uh, and Bella, she had approached me at one point and said, Cliff, you know, I think that I can keep – I can get you probably to jury as long as you're willing to go on the block a lot as a pawn, but I'll do what I can uh, – to at least get you to the jury and I was like well thanks Bella I really appreciate <laughs> really appreciate you you putting me up as a pawn so many times in, in exchange for jury house so uh, yeah I was kind of I, I was happy to see maybe if, if Bella could could get targeted and maybe break that alliance up a little bit uh, I wasn't sure the mechanics within you know Jess and Nicole and and that whole controversy or, or the whole argument about who had formed the the women's alliance and who hadn't and i just kept hearing different stories from different people and in all honesty i didn't really care as long as it created some divisions that i could maybe exploit you're right right um so uh so you were talking about that at, throughout throughout the season so far you had been uh doing cliff notes uh, you've been talking to the cameras about yeah, yeah, everything yeah. you had been doing a great job of staying in good with this big group they uh they were talking about you at this time as like the number number 10 number nine like uh one of the last people to go um but it was around this time that uh that christy is going to overhear you in the boat room talking to the cameras and uh she she hears you talk about how you feel like there's a big group and that there are couples and that her and Tommy are a couple. Uh, and it really, it wasn't that bad for her. Like you talked about yeah. kind of wanting to work with her. Um, but she she was just so excited about overhearing it. She just ran back God, and no. woke everyone up and told she was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just heard this thing. Um, <laughs> so what? this is really bad for your game. Yeah. You know what? I there's a bunch of sneaky people in that house. Who would, have, who would have expected that? And and I've told people before, I may have told y'all during the backyard interview, my wife has always said, ah, Cliff, you got a big mouth. Well, I, I just proved it for the whole nation that uh, I just don't have a good whisper voice. But the only person in that house that may have a bigger mouth than me was probably Christy because I think if she hadn't run right back and told everyone, she probably could have worked that much more to her advantage. But uh, yeah, she, she overheard me. I was... Uh, uh, less discreet than I, I thought I should be. And probably the only thing that didn't make it any worse was that it was early enough in the, the season that I didn't have a whole lot of really deep strategies. It was, it was a lot more about me just talking back and forth. And yeah, I did point out that there was this group of eight, but I don't know at that point in time that it was any big surprise really to anyone. Uh, I, I think we all pr pretty much were aware of that to some degree. Uh, me mentioning her and Tommy as part of it and, and kind of a duo of their own may have caught her off guard a little bit. But, yeah, I definitely had to do some damage control after that. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, you you weren't aware of it for a little while. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you th at this point, you became a pretty big target in Christie's eyes. Uh, she really started to see you as a threat and wanted to target you. Um, Tommy had always kind of been suspicious of yeah. of you as a player i just i just talked to tommy and i talked to him about this how like right from the get-go it really seemed like the two of you were the only ones talking about each other as potential threats in the game like you yeah. were talking to the cameras like I, this tommy guy i think yeah. he's good uh and tommy was really the only one until cliff notes that was like uh this this cliff guy though i don't know and it's funny because I mean, I talked to Tommy. I love, I love the guy. I, I enjoyed hanging out with him, and I've got massive respect for hi him as a person, as a game player, and all of that. And we talked a lot of times about, yeah, Tommy, you know that I've, I've targeted you in the past, and I know that you've targeted me in the past. And we always just knew it was just gameplay, and it, and that we recognized each other as potential threats. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I know that Tommy and then Christy from that point on both were. Uh, we're certainly I, I was no longer under the radar at that point in time mm. uh so um so you you're now uh, a big target and uh the the six shooters who are now the six shooters and not grateful um because they have basically shot you know uh nick and bella out at this point um or at least uh you know are, are definitely leaning in that direction they're now uh sort of looking to nicole as their sort of like uh 
eighth, ninth, whatever they want to have it. Um, and so uh, they're trying to reel her in a little bit more. And uh, this is when she starts to play a little bit more between the two of them. And that will lead into the following week when Nick is HOH. Um, but uh, really the only other thing that happens this week is that Sam is going to make this this like last minute play to try and save Kemi. Um, and he pitches it to Nicole. She goes and talks to you uh, about it and you were on board for it. Um, but ultimately it gets shut down. Uh, was this something that, uh, I mean, you were just kind of like sure or were you? No, I would have been happy keeping Kimmy. Again, I'm... You know, in the beginning, we, we'd been banished uh, together. Uh, she wasn't part of that, the Grateful Eight that, you know, did the yelling upstairs and everything else. And so uh, I, I did still at the same time feel a little bit of an alliance. Uh, obviously, Nicole and Ovi were my main people, but uh, Kimmy as well. Um, and nothing against Kat. I, I love, um, or, or no, it's Jess. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, Jess, just as well. Um, at that point, I was lined up enough with, with Nicole that uh, if, if she wanted to keep Kimmy, I didn't have any issue with that. I was fine with it. Yeah. Um, it, it you know, probably probably would have worked out, too, because uh, if, if Jess had stayed <clears throat> um, or even if Kat had left the first week, if either one of them had left, uh, you would have had the votes to get rid of Jack during your HOH week yeah. uh, because they would have been uh, on board with that, uh, unlike Kat and Jess. Um, yeah. But what are you gonna do? Yeah, uh, who knows? Hindsight twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, uh, Sam is is gonna talk to Nicole about there being an eight. Um, you know, Kemi is kind of uh, aware of this now. Uh, you know, Jack has has messed up in front of Sam and let him know about the name Grateful. Uh, Bella talked to Sam about it and told him about it. Um, so th this is really starting to get out. Grateful's basically almost dead as an alliance, but the, the information is coming out. Um, Nicole and Kemi really started to try to to get, you know, Nick and Bella called out before Kemi left, uh, which, of course, she does. Um, did you did you have a reaction when, you know, Kemi does her eviction speech and she's calling out Nick and Bella? Like, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, it was, it was interesting because... Uh... Kimmy had actually approached myself and I think either Ovi, I think Ovi may have been upstairs playing backgammon as well. And she'd approached us a few days before the eviction and said, Hey, I'm wondering, should I go into just real angry mode over the next few days? And, and I don't remember exactly what I said. I think something like, well, do you think that'll help you? I'm, I'm not, I don't know. But based on that, I was, I was wondering if Kimmy was going to really, go out you know how she was going to go out if she was voted out and so then during the eviction speech when she con kind of called out nick and bella i uh yeah i was waiting for the fireworks to start at that point i wasn't sure what that was going to lead to and sure enough after after the eviction and the hoh competition that's when things started blowing up and and nicole started getting drug in and and we had that whole situation occur Mm. Yeah, so Kemi is voted out, uh, and then Nick wins the HOH, and uh, there's also a, a rogue vote that's been cast. Yeah. Um, and that was, of course, uh, by Jackson. Our friend Jackson, yep. <laughs> which you will later, which you will later learn. Um, Christy tells you later, a bit later. Um, but uh, did did you suspect Jackson before then? No, I really didn't. I, I didn't know who had cast that rogue vote. I just knew that Nicole was upset because she, she knew that she was going to get blamed for it. But I had no clue who had cast that vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's pretty soon after the HOH that Nicole comes to you about this. Uh, you know, Sam had come to her about this eight person thing. Um, and you two really, really nail it down at this point. Like, oh, damn it uh it's the four couples they're together it's an alliance um like nah this is not good uh what are we gonna do about this um then uh nicole talks to kemi about it kemi finally lets nicole know because kemi was informed the previous week that cliff notes was exposed so yeah. then nicole finally learns about that and she's gonna finally tell you about it like the next morning uh, um it's so it took so long for this to come back to you I know. And I, gosh, I'm glad it came back to me. I'd hate to have still been sitting in there talking away or, or not been able to do my damage control. But yeah, Nicole comes in and, and she didn't even tell me so much about the Grateful Eight or anything. She just mentioned the fact that 
hey, Christy overheard you and they know about our alliance, this, this fellowship of the Zing. And when she said that, my heart just dropped. I thought, oh my gosh, I've cratered not just my game, but Nicole's game and, and Ovi potentially. And yeah, that was not a good day for me. Yeah, uh, it's funny that she, she was like, they have an alliance, it's called Zing. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's the last thing I wanted. And I went into this game saying, how come everyone always names their alliances and it just makes it easy to target it? And I didn't want to have an alliance name with them. I didn't want to have an alliance name, especially with Cliff, uh, Cliff's Angels later. And yet mm -hmm. people just keep wanting to have names for these alliances. And all it does is make it easier to target and identify it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ultimately, though, you know, they, they, they were laughing about the Fellowship of the Zing. Yeah. They thought, oh, what, what a, what a funny alliance! One of them is already evicted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then it turned out the Fellowship of the Zing, most successful alliance of the season. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, and I tried to downplay it when it was mentioned to me. I said, yeah, you know what, guys, what, you know, what do you expect me to do except try to form an alliance with someone? And yeah, you know, the best I can do is get someone who's already been voted out of the game. And Nicole and I aren't threats. We're just these bottom feeders. I think's the term Sam used sometimes. And so, yeah, I certainly tried to downplay it and no one ever seemed to take it so seriously that, that it had as much impact as I was afraid it was going to have. Uh, but I, I definitely had to do some damage control. At one point, Sis comes in and says, well, I understand that you were going to target myself and, and Jack. I said, well, no, no, there's, uh, I have no targets right now. I'm not picking anyone out. And she and I talked for a while. She eventually brought Christy in. And that's the first time that Christy and I kind of talked about the fact that she had overheard me. And I got Christy to, to, to tell Sis that, no, he didn't say he's going to target you and Jack. He just listed out the, the eight people in the alliance. And so I, I felt like I did what I could to minimize the damage that had been created by being overheard. Yeah, you talked a lot about uh, it was at this point that you talked a lot about your game plan as like, hey, look, I'm not I'm not trying yeah. to target anyone. I just just trying to like uh, hang along. And, and my yeah. my hope is that you guys eventually turn on each other. Yeah. And that was absolutely the truth. And, and I hope they they believed it. I know I told Tommy that I think I told a few others that it's just about surviving. It's about being patient enough because I know this alliance of eight and then later six can't last forever. And, and so and, and I tell them, I have no desire to go after y'all. I just want to sit tight. I'll, I'll act later. And and that that was the truth. Yeah. Um, so it's and really it was it was pretty good in terms of damage control. A lot of them did feel a bit more. They, you, know, you know what? Like that's fine. Like uh, that's that's his strategy. That's like uh, he's not really that much of a threat. And they did feel like they wanted to keep you at this point. Like Nick wanted you to stay. Um, you know, to to uh, to to a degree. You know, after the whole thing but we'll, that we'll talk about uh yeah. but uh the rest of the six shooters were like you know oh well you know we wanted to target cliff but maybe maybe not we're not sure yet um and so this is when nicole makes her sort of play a little bit here where she talks to holly um she got some information from holly she knew that there was a lot of tension between holly and nick and that whole situation and right before the nominations she goes to uh to nick and bella and she tells them that you know, they would have targeted you if you hadn't won the HOH, which is very much the case. It was very true. Um, and Nick said that he ooh, he was almost there. He almost put up Jack and Jackson, yeah. but he needed to talk to them first. He didn't have an opportunity, so he didn't do it. Uh, so you uh, you end up going up on the block. And um, and so then that's when, you know, Tommy has a conversation with Bella She's like, uh, Tommy, what's going on? And he's like, you tell me what's going on. <laughs> and they start talking about Nicole and how Nicole's running yeah. back and forth. Um, so I, I know that you weren't in that in that room, um, but uh, but things really started to to kick off. And, and like I said, I was just talking to Tommy about this. Like uh, he said that from his perspective, it just felt like they they caught somebody. They caught the enemy trying to split them apart and things got really out of hand uh and you you guys heard it downstairs can you yeah. can you tell me your experience of that oh that was amazing because i had no clue what was going on i was i was out of the loop on so much of this we had the uh the eviction the hoh competition next thing i know there are just people yelling upstairs 
and, and I can't figure out what's going on. Nicole goes up and she gets shut down real quick. Ovi goes up and gets yelled at. You can't come in. And I'm downstairs. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with me or, or, or just what's going on. And, uh, yeah, I felt completely, completely lost and out of the loop at, at that point uh, and just was waiting to see what, what the fallout was from it. Uh, after Nicole came down, we went into the RV and, and talked a lot. And she told me that she had kind of told people you know, what was going on and, and that she she hadn't lied, that she was telling the truth about kind of the divisions and all of that, but that she felt like she had completely destroyed her game at that point and because we're in alliance together, I wasn't sure what the impact was going to be on, on myself as well. But yeah, that was, and I know it's been talked about, but really those eight or so up there, uh, that's when I felt completely out of the loop and, and completely outpowered in, in terms of what was going on in that house. Uh, I spent a lot of time just sitting downstairs by myself at, at the dining room table, just, just waiting to hear what the, the next gunshot was going to be, what, what was going to happen next, because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh there was so it was there was a lot of like uh yelling that was happening upstairs uh nicole had tried to go up there she had the door closed in her face uh ovi went up there to say, yeah. say be, be nice guys was that was that a, like a difficult thing for you because you were you were telling ovi like hey you know you know watch out for your game over yeah. like uh be mindful of that um but you know, I, I can I can only imagine like it must have been difficult to just to, to hear that stuff happening and not do anything about it. Well, and, and the worst part is when when there was first yelling up there, it sounded like they were yelling at each other. And I thought, well, maybe maybe Nicole has achieved what she's looking for. Maybe they're pointing fingers at each other and something's about to blow up and we may really be good by the time this thing's all said and done. But after a little while, it didn't sound like yelling back and forth as much as just cheering and laughing and, and a lot of happier people up there. And, and my concern at that point was that whatever's happened, uh, especially with camp comeback and these other people all still in the house that, that they have pulled themselves back together and decided that they're not splitting up. They've resolved whatever Nicole brought up. And uh, yeah. So then suddenly you've got now an angry group of eight people instead of just a group of eight who felt like they had all the power but now they they seem upset as well and so that was part of my thing to Ovi was I didn't still at that point know what was going on for certain and I didn't want him to uh, to do anything that would potentially get him in the target uh, as well as Nicole at that point so yeah I was definitely concerned about it and and wondering just what the impact was going to be yeah um so you know, you did have you'd have a nice moment with Nicole. She was feeling very upset, um, and you, you told her like, uh, "Hey, you know, hang hang in there. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it, just because they're together now does not mean they're going to stay together." Um, and she said that you were the uh, you were the only person that uh, treated people like uh, they were humans in the house. I tried. I I hope I was somewhat successful like it, but yeah, it killed me to see the way that that they were being treated. And you know, I remember I told Nicole at the time, uh, how you end up in this game first or last or whatever, doesn't really define who you are as a person and, and what you are. But yeah, she was hurting and, and I'm the, <laughs> you know, I was the one who had just been nominated on the block, not Nicole. And yet I'm comforting her instead of the other way around. But yeah, I could see that she was hurting and, and I hate to see anyone hurting like that. Was there a part of you that felt like, uh, like, like this is this is potentially good for me if if Nicole is in trouble, like, uh, like maybe I need to like back away from this situation? No, not at that point, especially because she wasn't on the block at the time, and, and she was a final two alliance with me, and I truly trusted her more than anyone else in the house at, at that point in time, and so. No, I, I, it wasn't, I wasn't happy at all to have her game blowing up because I felt like it was going to create issues for my game and also for her who I cared about so much. Uh, and especially once I heard them all laughing and seeming much happier upstairs, then now nah, I, I wasn't thinking this was a good thing at all at that point in time.
Yeah. So, so what was your game plan to stay this week? You know, you were just nominated. The big blow up happened. You're up on the block against Jess. Um, you were told that you were just a pawn. Nick yeah. wasn't really truthful to you in that particular instance, though you do eventually get him on board with you. Um, so what, what was the game plan? Well, I, I, at that point, I did think I was a pawn because I had heard by then that, that Jess was involved in this potential Women's Alliance, the Black Widows, I think they called it, and and I'd heard Jack and Jackson both kind of kind of dragging Jessica a little bit, talking about her cooking bacon, and I don't know, just little silly things that they were uh, they were a little critical of Jessica on. So based on that, I was thinking that I probably was safe, but again, I've watched enough seasons to know that that pawn or not, you're never completely safe. So. Uh, the the first few days it was just trying to stay in touch and contact with everyone else and and talking to people like like mickey or jackson saying you know that hey, i'm i'm a loyal soldier and i still want to work together i hope y'all got me taken care of and and them saying yeah yeah you're good and um just trying to maintain contact with everyone as much as possible yeah it was a it was a weird situation because you know ultimately uh the the veto is won by cat who uses it on yeah. Jess, um, and I know you tried to. I think you tried to talk Cat out of using it, right? Well, no, actually, Cat. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Cat was my choice for the veto competition, uh, and I don't remember right now whether it was House Guest Choice. I think I just draw her, drew her name, if I recall. Uh, but I was hoping when she won that veto that because because I had picked her that maybe she would pull me off the block. Realistically, I knew how tight she and Jess were, so I wasn't surprised when she didn't. But no, I've, I wanted her to use it on me, um, but beyond that, I, I didn't really push whether she wasn't to use it all at all or, uh, or, or pull Jess off because I, I knew she was going to use it to pull either Jess or myself off. I think Kat felt tight enough with the both of us that I never really felt like it was, there was a question or a possibility that she was going to leave Noms alone. Yeah. Uh, so she does use it to pull Jess off the block. Nicole goes up. And yeah. uh, at that point, you felt pretty comfortable that Nicole was the target, right? Because of the big blow up. Yeah, because of the big blow up. And, and I told a lot of people, I, I don't really want to campaign against uh, against Nicole. We, we were as close as we were. And, and I did a little bit. I mean, I talked about people saying, hey, I know that, you know, Nicole kind of did this stuff and blew probably blew up her game by throwing this stuff out to y'all and everything. And everyone saying, now nah, you're good. You're good. You know, it's Nicole's really dug her own grave. And so, yeah, I was thinking most of that week, uh, really right up until the day of eviction, I thought that I was probably safe, uh, that particular week. Then I started seeing people kind of looking at me a little bit funny and maybe not talking to me quite as much. And, my old spider sense uh, kicked in and, and I started getting suspicious that maybe something was up. Yeah, well, it was, it was a weird week because not even Nicole knew that she was going to stay. You know, through all of the, the conversations and the mediations that took place uh, between Nicole and, and Nick and Bella and all of that, uh, the six shooters did realize that Nicole was telling the truth. I mean, they had done the things she said, yeah. and so they assumed that Nick and Bella probably did as well. Um, and so they, but they were keeping it even from Nicole that Nicole was going to stay. Um, and so uh, you know, Nicole was, was blind sided by the fact that she stayed in the game um and this is going to be the end of of your game uh you know for the for the first portion of it at least um yeah. and it, was, it was tough because nicole and i sat out in the pool i think maybe on that monday or tuesday beforehand and we're just kind of lamenting that hey one of us is probably going to be gone as of thursday and you know we've really enjoyed playing with each other but you know it is what it is and you know, we'll be friends forever and who would have thunk that we would have been there still towards towards the end of this game? But yeah, no, it's a, it, it was a tough situation knowing I was going to be up on the block against her. Yeah. Uh, so did, did this, did this teach you anything, you know, about the game? Like, did you feel like, uh, like, I mean, this, this could have been the, the end of everything, right? Like yeah. this, if, if not for uh, the winning camp comeback, uh, this, this could have been the end of your experience. Yeah. It, it taught me a couple of things. Um, one was I had gone in saying, I'm not really going to campaign against Nicole. And, and it was fairly low key. And after that happened, I said, gosh, I can't, I, I've got to be more aggressive when, when my rear ends on the line and, 
and do what I need to do to survive. So I, I kind of was was slapping myself a little bit that, that I hadn't been more aggressive about campaigning. Uh, the other part was just not taking people at face value so much uh, and, and understanding that there's a lot of undercurrent things that are going on and, and trying to be more aware of of not just what people are saying, but maybe who they're talking to and how they're looking at you and other people and such. Uh, because I just kind of took it, it took it at face value when they said, "Now nah, you're good." It's it's Nicole that we're going after, and I didn't I didn't dig deeper enough to discover that maybe that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So uh, ultimately, you are evicted, and uh, you head to the camp comeback competition, uh, which was something that was very much in your in your wheelhouse apparently so i wouldn't have guessed that beforehand but yeah it worked out pretty well <laughs> um uh i i i've i've heard from from some others that the second they saw this competition they were like well well damn it <laughs> <laughs> i i i i thought i'd be okay with it but i i really didn't know until until i got there i think I'm a bit of a per perfectionist, and so I guess a competition where it's just the finest little tweaks, you know, back and forth, uh, maybe benefits me to some degree. I was just glad it was something that involved rolling balls down a ramp and not running up ramps or swinging from ropes or other things that you know, someone like a David would have had obviously a huge advantage over someone like myself. So yeah, when I saw what kind of competition it was and that that's all I had to do, I certainly was more excited uh, about my opportunities and, and possibilities. Yes, yeah, so you, uh, you you completely dominate this competition, uh, followed by what became your, your signature celebration. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, Which I, I learned was a sports thing. Yeah, I actually had a, I'm, I'm an Aggie, uh, Johnny Manziel, fresh, uh, freshman player, won the Heisman Trophy, and he would always do that. Uh, my son, Daniel, is also an Aggie, and so we talked when I was getting ready to go in the house, and I told him, I said, hey, if I ever win anything, I'm going to, I'm going to do the the Manziel uh, gesture, and he thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So, I was just happy I had an opportunity to actually use it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so there was a lot of talk throughout the rest of the season about the fact that you were voted out, um, yeah. and you know whether or not that meant that you should win the game if you had that opportunity um do, do, do you have any any thoughts on that uh, you know being the person that, that that lived it yeah i'm kind of biased now i think <laughs> I, uh, I know i've seen tweets i know someone like evil dick his position has been for a long time that if you're ever voted out you're disqualified from from ever winning the comp the, the game I, I don't think that should be the case i mean a twist exists sometimes you're voted out sometimes you're given a disadvantage or, or an advantage and that's just part of the game uh, I think I think rather than being excluded from winning the whole thing because I was voted out, the fact that I had to jump through additional hoops in order to actually survive in that game should give me more credit rather rather than reduce my credit. Uh, not just here, but even that first day when we were banished out of the house, uh, I suppose some people could say even then that if you were banished and had to fight your way back in, do you deserve to, to win the, the prize at the end? My thinking is if you're at, if you're there at the final two, then you've done something right. And, and regardless of what path you maybe took to get there, if you're there, then, then you should be given consideration for it. Yeah, I mean, something that I had been considering was uh, in terms of Camp Comeback in general, when Jack won HOH, his first thought was, I want to backdoor Nick. Um, but Jackson talked him down saying, you can't do that, Camp Comeback is yeah. in play you, you we can't betray the alliance yet uh and nick has also said on numerous occasions that one of the major factors preventing him from going after jack and jackson was camp comeback yeah. um and so from my perspective i kind of looked at it like I, I feel like i don't know i don't even know if cliff is evicted if not for camp comeback yeah. the very thing that brings him back in the game yeah, no, and, and and that's a good point. And and there's a lot of me that thinks almost once camp comeback was over and I went back in, it was only then that the gameplay really started seeming to ramp up. Yeah, I've, I've told people before, the first month in the house, I had a lot of fun. We were all shooting a bull and hanging out and playing games and all that. Starting on day 30 onwards, it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as much fun. It was a lot more stress because that's when the gameplay really started uh, in, in the next year, I think. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you win your way back into the game, uh, but that means that Kemi, David, and Ovi are out. Yeah. Um, and this this sort of ties in with a lot of what was eventually brought up at the end of the season, uh, a lot of the controversy surrounding, especially this first portion of the game um that there you know there's an image that that you know came out from this episode where it's yeah. david ovi and kemi sitting there first three gone in uniforms um and th that was uh an uncomfortable image to, to sure. watch especially given um you know how a lot of the people in camp comeback were treated in the house um is that something that you that you were aware of at the time in the house that you thought might be happening? At the time, I wasn't that aware of it because I was just happy that I'd won the competition and I was back in the house. I, I was I was just excited about that and not thinking so much uh, about the other the other side of it. Uh, as you know, especially that finale night when it was brought up and you know they mentioned the three of them and then they mentioned me also having been picked by by Mickey because I was the old guy and yeah, I, I guess I hadn't really thought about that either. I just, I've always gone in knowing that the older guy, you know, sometimes is, is a target just because, uh, but yeah, I mean, it really, it, it did concern me. I, uh, I don't want to be tainted by anything that, that was implied or, or suggested during that finale night or, or straight out said. And, uh, I, I'd like to think that th that wasn't the reason uh, that the four of us were put up to begin with. Uh, and, and I hope that's the case. But but at the very end, when I hear a few of the comments that were made by a couple of people, it, it does worry me somewhat. Sure. Yeah, there, there was there was definitely a talk of, of implicit bias that was happening, um, you know, not only with the, the, the decisions uh, for who was evicted, but also with how, uh, you know, certain house guests were treated in the house. Um, you know, d there was definitely, you know, ta a lot of talk about uh, about David and certainly a lot of talk about Kemi. Um, yeah. wh what were your feelings on on that? I uh, yeah, it, it hurts. I. Uh... I do think the way that house, the, the, the way the rules are designed where every week you eliminate someone and uh, especially in the first weeks when there's a lot of this anyone but me type attitude, it it probably becomes easier to, to become uh, a bit of a mob mentality. And uh, once someone's identified as a potential target, uh, everyone else, no one maybe wants to speak up as much as they should to protect them because they don't want to be the next target. And I, I certainly can see how some of that came into play with, with a bunch of us that weren't in that, that majority group. So do, do you feel like uh, that? Because I do, I do remember you talking to the cameras at one point, especially about Ovi, um, and talking about like how you felt like you were maybe uh, going along with with the things being said about Ovi. Maybe not necessarily uh, that you felt were were biased uh, racially in any way, but that yeah. just they were making fun of Ovi uh, in a cruel way. That you wish that you would you could stand up more, and that you know, but you felt like you were trapped in the game. Um, yeah. Is that is that a struggle that you that you faced? Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it's maybe not just a struggle within the game, but just in life in general. Of uh, but but it's just it's magnified so much in the game because every week someone is voted out, every week someone is targeted, and as I mentioned, I, I was trying to get in with this group. I I never really viewed what was being said. As, as racial bias at all, uh, I always saw it more as just someone trying to identify a target uh, and everyone else piling on to a certain extent. And yeah, it, it pulled me apart that uh, I didn't want to destroy my game by being too aggressive, uh, but I, I, I didn't like some of the bullying that I saw going on uh, of anyone. Yeah. Um, what what was your relationship with Kemi like? Because, uh, you know, you, I, I felt like you had a, a, a decent relationship with her, but yeah. there was a lot of like of trash talking that went on about Kemi. Um, so can you tell me more about that? Yeah, it's uh, Kemi and I, as I mentioned in the very first, uh, I had talked to her and Jessica right after we got back from banishment about trying to kind of watch each other's backs. And 
I didn't really get much reception back from, from either one of them, uh, other than just sure. But, but then nothing, uh, nothing much happened with it. Kimmy just never really tried to, to talk too much game with me. Um, we, uh, I, I just didn't feel like I, I clicked with her so much uh, just because she she wasn't talking the game. And again, maybe it was because this the Women's Alliance was trying to form at that point. Uh, from a personality situation, we maybe didn't click so much. We, we'd we spent some time in the swimming pool talking, and she had mentioned that she wanted to buy uh, on Amazon a, a fake service animal vest for her dog so she could take her dog on airplanes and everything. And I've got family members who who are handy have handicap tags, uh, a paraplegic in my family, things like that, and so th- that part really rubbed me the wrong way that someone would kind of take advantage of of something that that is very important to me that I, w- I would not do something like that, you know, buying fake fake things online, uh, and I think I mentioned that in the boat room during one of my cliff notes at, at one point that. Um, you know, there, there, there were some there were some things that that kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, but at the end of the day, we're all we were 16 different people brought into this house and I, I wanted as much as possible to keep my gameplay separate from from emotions and, and personalities and, and things like that. Uh, as far as you know, things that were mentioned later, you know, we spent a lot of time laughing about Kimmy doing whispering and things like that, but I, I just looked at that as kind of a mannerism, uh, no different than, than making fun of, uh, of Nick's haircut or talking about Christy, you know, eating and crying all the time. And it was just a mannerism that, that people would talk about. And that really didn't take it as anything more than that. Have you, have you spoken to Kemi at all after the season? No, the uh, finale party that we had on the Thursday after the finale, I, I tried to talk to her, uh, ask her how she was doing. And, and she didn't really seem, uh, seem that interested in talking to me at the time. I'd like to, I, I'm open to it. And as, as soon as she's she's willing i'd love to sit down and kind of hash this out with her and, and work it all out yeah i i well i i know she definitely felt uh it wasn't wasn't pleased i think with some of the the things that you know a lot of people were saying about her but uh but you know even even you um and so uh you know hopefully hopefully you can talk with her and uh and and you know uh, you know, I, I think I, I think she, you know, kind of does deserve uh, an, an apology from a lot of people. I agree. And, and that could be me as well. I uh, I am not a guy that enjoys conflict. I, I've always been kind of the mediator type guy that that wants people to get along. And I would not ever want to have a situation where everyone in this house couldn't. You know, I, I spent a lot of time in the house talking family and then, you know, try, trying to keep the game removed from 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 personal and all of that. And uh you know, it, yeah, it kills me if uh, if there's things that I said that that she's upset about, and and I'd love to work that out with her and uh, apologize for what I need to apologize for, and and make sure that at least she understands maybe where I was coming from with it. And uh, yeah, I, I I hope I get that opportunity to talk to her. Yeah. Um. So uh, has has Ovi talked to you uh, much about any of this either? Have you have you gotten a chance to talk to Ovi much? Yeah, Ovi and I talked at the uh, the cast party as well, and we've been texting back and forth and, and talking some, and uh, um, not so much about the game itself, just life after the game and, and what we're up to and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, so that was certainly, uh, you know, a, a big, big part of the early portion of the season. Um, it was... Uh, you know, something that really, I think, put a, a sour taste in people's mouths, unfortunately, for uh, the season. But once Camp Comeback ended, uh, we did get, uh, as you mentioned, the game started to kick in a little more. And uh, and I do think the season got uh, a little more exciting uh, in general. Um, and, uh, you know, part of this is that you win this next HOH um, and you are ready to play and ready to take a shot and you go immediately and you are ready you're going to put up jack and jackson here we go yeah i'm not the kind of guy that pussyfoots around i identified the targets and uh said that you know as as i mentioned before jack was my primary target and uh, i was going to kind of just face it straight in front of me and see if i couldn't take some action and make something happen yeah. Um, this is also, you know, right after you got back into the game, Jackson and Holly are going to come up to you and be like, hey, hey, you know, it was all part of the plan. It was, oh, uh... 
You know, any plan that involves me getting voted out and having to fight my way back in is not is not a good plan in in my opinion. And yeah, they told me that in the storage room, and the whole time they tell me, "Oh, oh, I'm glad that you know it's just part of a plan and all that." And in my head, I'm thinking, eh, "No, that, that's not going to fly with me. I uh, I don't like that plan." Now, I'm, I'm glad it worked out, I, but yeah, that was that was kind of silly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um it was you know it, it, he's doing his best i guess i know so I just... I, you know here i am I, I battle my way back now i'm hoh I, everyone wants to cover their tail i get it and so i didn't take what they're saying seriously but um whatever mm, yes um oh yeah i uh I, I forgot about this so when you won hoh yeah uh i i was like uh all right here we go uh cliff he's back in the game he's ready he's ready to go he's he's gonna save the season um and i actually uh i i got uh an orwell <laughs> and we brought orwell out to celebrate um yeah. and orwell joined me on the morning updates that week well, good. Yeah, I'm glad someone in that house was cheering for me. Oh, and Nicole was, and uh, Orwell, I guess, and that may have been about it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you uh, you are going to put up Jack and Jackson. Um, you, at this point, you tell you know Nicole, Cat, and Jess that you guys you really need to stick together. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, you had a, you had a tricky situation with Nicole because she just had this big falling out with Nick and Bella. But you're saying, like, look, they're the ones that splintered off. Kind of yeah. need to work with them. Yeah, I know. It It was – that was difficult. And as I mentioned, from day one, I kind of tried to connect with Nick a little bit. And so I felt like he and I had each other's back to some degree. Um, but, yeah, Nicole was, was at odds with him. Uh, she had started working things out. And I think – I hope she, she realized as well that Jack was kind of that linchpin in that group that – really represented the biggest threat but yeah we were we were dealing with a lot of different moving parts at that at that point in time mm. uh so um you 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 talked to nicole you needed to take a shot at the at the six that excluded uh nick and bella um and she was okay with it so so jack and jackson on the block um this is uh this is a tricky situation though and so at the time, I was thinking maybe the better play was to put up Christy and Tommy um, because they were really this, the heart of yeah. everything that was happening. Um, but Jack really was the the big front that they were uh, putting out in front of them uh, as the, the the big target in front of them. Um, I know you you had sort of seen uh, that Tommy was a threat, but I don't know. Did, did you fully sort of realize just how much Tommy and Christy were running the show at that point? No, not really. I, I really thought it was more that Jack w was the one that was tying everyone together. Uh, in all honesty, I intentionally didn't target Tommy and Christy at that point in time because I thought when this group broke up that there was a possibility f that I may be able to get in with, with Tommy and Christy and, and form form another group where we could perhaps take over the game uh, at that point. I was... I was trying to be very careful about who I was going to target and not target at HOH based on who I thought I could work with going forward. And as I said, I, I already knew that Tommy and Christy saw me as a threat, but I was hoping that they would see me as someone that better to work with than work against. And, and we may be able to put something together once the, the group blew up. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, though, even though you have you know the card set up to get Jack out of the game, Christy has this power. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and Jackson did tell you after Ovi left that Ovi had a power. Um, I had talked to you after the season and uh, and, and you had, had told me something that, you know, sometimes you don't consider everything about like the perspective in the house. But you actually you told me that you didn't necessarily believe him, that you didn't know if, yeah. if you could believe him or not. Yeah. Jackson came in and told me that Ovi had whispered as he walked out the door that that he had this power. But he had just gotten through also telling me that this was part of some grand plan to vote me out to, to preserve Nicole and I both for this alliance. And then I thought it was very strange that that Ovi would have told Mickey this uh, right as he's going out the door because Ovi didn't tell me that. Now, as I think back, I think Ovi had whispered in my ear and probably he probably told me that that he had won this power, but I didn't hear him and I didn't realize that until we talk later. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, why would Ovi tell Mickey this and not tell me that? I already know that Mickey's trying to spin things right now to cover his ass a little. 
And so, yeah, when he told me that, I was like, mm, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm buying that or not, Mickey. Yeah, well, to be fair, the the story about whispering in his ear was totally fake uh, because oh. Ovi Ovi had pitched. Uh, this was actually during Ovi, during week one. Ovi pitched last minute to Jack and Jackson. He told them, "I won the power, and yeah. I will use it to help you guys." They ran it straight to Tommy and Christy, um, and the, who decided to to ultimately uh, c- continue to send Ovi out the door, um, and then. That's- and see, I wish Ovi had told me that. If, I, right? if he had told me he had the power, I would know a lot more about what was going on. And Christy telling me later that, oh, I just had the suspicion that Ovi may have won it. And that's why I sent him home. Well, it wasn't a suspicion. Apparently, he had told everyone except for me. So, yeah, once again, a little bit out of the loop at that point in time. Yeah, he talked to the cameras a couple of times afterward. Like, uh, oh, I feel bad not telling Cliff, but, you know, in case he made it back in the he didn't want to. I, I, I don't remember his exact reasons, to be honest. Um, but uh, but he, he did feel bad about it at the very least. Well, Ovi and I are going to have to have a little discussion about that. I'm going to give him a hard time because uh, there were a lot of people that were blamed. I guess it's good he told someone because there were a lot of people that thought I'd won the power. I kept saying, nah, I've been around oil fields for so long. My sense of smell is gone. There's no way y'all should think that I have the power. But I still saw people looking at me a little bit funny. And if they think you've got a power, that just makes you that much more of a target. So I'm glad he told someone. I just wish he told me as well. Yeah. So uh, so Christy has the diamond power of veto, and that information is out there at this point. And then Jackson is going to win the veto. And that means that Christy can use her power. Jackson can then nominate Bella uh, in his place. And Bella will go home because as you tried to get, you tried to talk to Kat, you tried to talk to Jess, but they were just not on board to vote Jack out uh, if Bella was an option. Um, How did you feel about that at the time? Because it really felt like that should have been an option for them. To to vote out Jack? Yeah. Yeah, I was a... I was a little disappointed. I, I knew that there was they, they had their issues with Bell and all of that, but from a long term strategic standpoint, I really felt like Jack was such a huge target that I was hoping others would, would agree with that and identify the same thing and and make that vote to, to make it happen. But yeah, I just as I started talking to him more and more, it, it just didn't seem like that was the way that they were leaning and so I had to start considering different options. Right. And so the option that you ultimately uh, go with is that you have a conversation with Christy um, and she tells you all this stuff about Jackson and she tells you that she doesn't really want to have she doesn't want to use the power, but she she really needed to get from you that uh, that you would be on board with her uh, if she did use the power or something along those lines. Um, Can you run me through? the this this conversation with christy it's probably uh one of the more controversial decisions made (laughs) in the game uh so run me through your thought process here amazing that i'm involved in all the controversial decisions (laughs) uh yeah we we talked and i know christy was talking about how she she could use it and and put someone up and but she kind of wanted to use it for herself and that she had felt pressured by by Jack, I guess, in that week one to, to put people up, but, you know, she had to protect herself, and we talked a lot, and eventually, I think I'm the one that actually suggested that, hey, you know, if I if I put up Bella myself, can, can y'all give me some protection and, and some safety and, and maybe uh, keep me good for a while, and she jumped all over that, and my thinking was a couple of things. Uh, during that conversation, I learned that it's not just that she had the power, but more importantly, she had told everyone that she had the power. If she had stayed quiet and I was the only one that knew, I probably wouldn't have done it. I probably would have just said, hey, stay quiet. I, you know, you can save the power to use it on yourself later if you need it, but I'm sending Jack out the door and that would have, we would have perhaps been able to get some votes, maybe make something happen. Um, but the fact that I knew that she had told everyone that she had it, and I just got the feeling that Christy in that house was very she didn't want a lot of people upset with her it seemed like she was it was very important that she have uh support uh from other people and and that everyone else liked her as much as possible and i just wasn't certain enough that with everyone else knowing that they wouldn't put enough pressure on her that she would end up using it anyway uh just because they all knew that she had it so my thinking was if she's going to use it then then whether I put up Bella or she does it herself, either way, Bella's going up. 
And if I can buy a few weeks of, of safety, because again, it's a matter of me just being patient enough until this, this alliance implodes. So if I can buy a few weeks of, of safety with it, then uh, then so much the better. Plus, she only had two more weeks left on. I know she wanted to to potentially save it so she could protect herself. If this had been something that was going to last for the next four weeks or six weeks, then it may have been worth calling her bluff and forcing her to, to flush that power, uh, to flush the power out by making her use it. But knowing there were only a couple of weeks left anyway, and that I basically could buy protection for those couple of weeks made me think that that was... Uh, that was a safer, safer approach to go. Uh, and again, I, I was still thinking there was a possibility to maybe work with Christy and Tommy. And I felt like this was buying a little bit of credit with them uh, by making this agreement with her. Yeah, um, it was, you know, a lot of people were hoping that you would go back on your word, that you were tricking her into yeah. doing this. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I thought about it. I mean, Maybe not seriously, but but I did realize that I could easily because she had to tell by 11 o'clock on eviction day or nomination day, or I guess veto ceremony day, she had to announce whether she was going to use the power or not. So it easily could have been me then, you know, once Mickey pulled himself off, put her put her up and, and do something with it. But my concern was if I did that, yeah, I could get either Jack or Christy sent home. But at that point in time. I knew the only way to survive through the end of this game was going to be making a lot of deals. I wasn't going to be this massive challenge competitor, things like that. It was going to have to be making deals. And if I did that to Christy, I was worried that no one would ever be able to trust me or take me at my word for any deals going forward. And that, yeah, I could send out someone that was powerful in the house, but I was just really worried that people, you know, Tommy, sis, the other people in that alliance, that they easily could then turn around and go after me as a target just for backstabbing Christy like that. Yeah. Uh, and ultimately, I think the way that things played out, you probably would have gone home the following week um, yeah. if you had done that. Uh, I mean, I, I can tell you this was such a controversial decision. Uh, at first, I was saying... I think it's it's a really close decision, but I would I would backstab her. I would go for it. Um, that's what I want to see. But I thought about it more, and I came to the conclusion that I actually did feel like it was probably the better move to go ahead with what you were doing. Um, and I was talking about that on a morning update when uh, when Derek Lavasser uh, decided to call in, and we debated about your move. Oh. Uh, okay. He felt he felt that you have to force. Christy to use her power to burn it um and i felt like uh the uh the the social capital that you got from making the deal was worth it because the power just it wasn't actually that useful um and it was only two more weeks so um there was a lot of back and forth it was a very interesting discussion uh ultimately though i do feel like the results panned out in a way that made the thing work i mean i don't know how privy you were to a lot of these conversations but especially when you were up on the block against cat it was kind of a close call there uh for for a long uh, way uh and and a lot of people just said you know what though cliff is good to his word we can trust cliff at his word um and so we know we know that if cliff promises us we're good um and so that was a big reason why you why you stayed that week and why you were able to make deals with people moving forward yeah, and, and I knew that was going to be the case. And I know that big Taco Tuesday blow up we had, there were conversations between Christy and Nick about, you know, that Christy said Cliff was good for his word. You knew that he wouldn't have done what you wanted to do, Nick. And so I knew that making that move and, and not not backstabbing Christy like that made a lot of people a lot more comfortable working with me and, and trusting what I said. And I had to have that in the game because I knew I wasn't going to be protected every week, uh, that I wasn't going to win a whole lot of challenges. So I had to have people that felt like they could believe in me. So, no, I, I don't regret that decision. That was hard because I really wanted Jack out of the house. I mean, I really wanted to make my big move, get him gone. Uh, but again, as we said, it was only two weeks of extra power that she had. So I wasn't so worried about trying to flush the power out because of that. It was really me having to back off on on going after the target that I really wanted, but it just seemed to make the most sense for my game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so ultimately, you decide to put Bella up. You have to break that news to uh, to Bella and to Nick. Nick was was pretty upset at first, um, but uh, you know he he got over it. Well, um, he put me on the block to begin with, so you know I feel like yeah. uh, you know a, a quid pro pro kind of deal. I've he couldn't get too upset with me considering what he'd done the week before. 
it's fair um so uh so bella is then gonna go up on the block um this is when Nicole had, uh, I think I already told you about this. Nicole had such a sweet moment uh, going up into the HOH room, um, you know, picked up uh, a photo of your family and said she was so proud of you, wanted to sit in the final two with you. Very yeah. sweet. I, that, that girl, I'm so glad I aligned with her and uh, you know, she, she played such an amazing game and, and I'm so proud of her and I hope she's proud of me and you know, just a lot of respect both directions. Yeah. Um, you also had a conversation with Kat where you confirmed again, like, we're really not going to vote out Jack. Um, because Nick felt very confident that he had Kat's vote. Um, and, but you kind of knew that you, you didn't. Um, and so you talked to Kat and you talked to her about the fact that Christy had spilled a lot of information about Jackson. And she kind of confirmed that, like, yeah, there's a lot of tension there. And you, you two kind of planned together at that point uh you never really coordinated all that much but from that point forward the next couple of weeks um in a lot of the ways that nicole was working against grateful in the first couple of weeks and you know using the cracks that were there to to widen those gaps um you and and cat were really working both sides of six shooters uh yeah. talking to jackson and holly and talking to christy and and kind of fueling that fire is that something that you were really working on in these weeks yeah, it was. And I think Kat, uh, because we were both on the block the first week and I'd spent some time consoling Kat, she was very upset when she was on the block. And, and we got into that whole joke about, you know, both from Texas, uh, that I was her dad, she was my daughter, that whole little thing we kidded about. So uh, we did get closer as we went on. And yeah, I think we started seeing some some common goals and, and some common strategies, I suppose, of trying to work within that group. And and figuring out where where there were opportunities that maybe we could exploit. So I, I don't know that it was anything that we we verbally stated out loud. It was just a matter of us both trying to see where we could go with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Bella is ultimately evicted this week. Uh, your your H O H did not succeed in the way that you wanted it to. However, you are now back in the good graces of the major alliance. And they also now trust you at your word and you are kind of feeding them little bits of information here and there um, as the uh, the game moves forward. Um, so Holly's going to win the next HOH. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm glad I didn't do that competition. That would have been a <laughs> tough one for me. Um, and so um it's at this time uh, after Holly wins, actually, that uh, Kat actually betrays the Cliffs Angels and tells Holly about Cliffs Angels. Yeah. Um, and so this is, yeah, this is the connection that uh, could have been disastrous for your game, um, that Kat actually uh, knew Holly from from outside and, uh, and, and you were not aware of this. I had no clue. I, I knew they had been in similar circles with some energy drink companies and things like that, but I had no clue and I really didn't know that that cat was going back and spilling the beans about stuff either. So, uh, bad cat, bad cat, but no, I, you know, yeah, yeah. That could have been a, a lot more disastrous than it was. There, there were a lot of people talking to a lot of different people in that house. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so luck luckily Holly actually felt at this time that, uh, she was just, just enough skeptical of, the rest of the six shooters and felt good enough about you that she didn't want to spill any of this information. She actually wanted to pull you and the rest of Cliff's Angels in. Um, and so she's going to target uh, Nick and Sam with the hopes that she can get Nick out of the game. Um, but she did consider putting up Nicole because uh, f f well, we'll have to you know ask Kat at some point. But Kat was really trying to get Nicole on the block. Oh. Um and and telling uh telling holly that nicole was not to be trusted still really? don't understand where that came from no that's that's completely news to me i had no clue yeah um so uh but but then ultimately she's going to volunteer for the block uh which is also kind of a, a strange decision um so uh so nick is going to win the veto take himself down there's a lot of back and forth about should nicole go on the block 
should uh, um, should should somebody else go on the block to to essentially send uh, Sam home? Um, and and Cat was the person who had volunteered. So it's Nicole or Cat. And Holly really wanted to take a shot at Nicole, but uh, but there was a lot of pushback from Tommy and Christy. Uh, what what were you doing at this time? Just trying to make sure it wasn't me going on the block. <laughs> I. Think. I uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually didn't realize that. I When I talked to Holly, she had made it sound like it was pretty much a done deal that Kat was going to go up, but there was zero chance that Kat was going home, that it was straight up Nick that was, was heading out the door. And uh, as I said before, I kind of tried to work with Nick, but I didn't think it was going to happen at that point in time. Uh, Bella had just gone home the, the week before, so I really didn't have a huge issue with it. I, I thought it was okay if, if Nick was going out the door. Mm -hmm. um, so you uh, you had a conversation with Nicole uh, where you know you guys now had a lot of information uh, between Christy, between Jackson, that they were kind of starting to target one another um, or at least not trust one another. Um, and uh, this is when you told Nicole, like, uh, the, the split is coming. Yeah, yeah. We, got, we just have to be ready to take advantage. That's right. And I knew it was coming. Christy had spilled some beans on how she was a little upset with Mickey during our conversation when I was HOH. And so mm -hmm. I knew there was some animosity between the two. And yeah, as we got further into it, I could see it happening more and a little sniping back and forth. And uh, yeah, that was the opportunity that we were waiting for. You also had some conversations with Nick. Nick was starting to say that he wanted to get back in with the six and with Tommy um, and he wanted to kind of bring you along um, yeah. because he felt he felt close to you even though he was disappointed with your decision as HOH he still felt close to you um, and uh, and he was actually not super great with Nicole still at this point um, but it was you know you actually you were telling Nick like hey we need we need to bring Nicole along with wherever we go um, and you also were telling Nick that like we can't just jump on board we need to like split these people up first yeah. um, do you do you remember that conversation uh, yeah but all, in all honesty not so much I remember <laughs> some general general impressions but yeah lots of conversations over the last hundred days or so. yeah. <laughs> I do, I do think that like, going back, looking at this conversation, I think this was actually the uh, the real kicking off point for the Nick and Nicole relationship. Um, prior to this conversation, he had been, you know, not super on board with Nicole. Um, and uh, he starts to talk with Nicole after this conversation, says, uh, gives her some information. He even warned her that uh, Sis was kind of coming for her at the time. Um, and so uh, that was, I don't know, that was just kind of interesting to me. Um, yeah, it's funny to think that you don't pick up or, or you don't hear while while you're in the house. And uh, yeah, and I know Nick was talking to me about trying to join up. And, and to some degree, you never say no when someone offers to bring you into a group or whatever. But I didn't want to start losing all the other people I was working with, the Cliffs Angels and such as well. So uh, it was... It was a, it was tough trying to work with so many sides all at once, and I think Nick and I were both doing it to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe this is also, uh, at least the chat is telling me, this was the have not week um, that that Jackson was a have not. Um, and this has been, uh, people are very, very still up in arms about this. Uh, I asked Jackson straight up in the yeah. backyard, uh, did you eat in the shower? Uh, and he said no. Um, but a lot of people, they, you know, there's video out there. A lot of people feel very strongly that Jackson was cheating as a have not. Uh, do you have an opinion on this? I have no clue whether he was cheating or not. I was, I was not privy to him while he was in the shower. Uh, I will only say this, that if, if eating was occurring when you were have not, then I would hope that it would be recognized, called out and appropriate punishments applied. Uh, I don't think anyone should be above the law and the rules. And we all knew exactly what it meant to be a have not and be on slop. So, yeah, I've, I, I hope it was I hope it would have been applied if that was truly the case. But I have no idea whether whether he was eating in a shower or not. It certainly was never mentioned to me uh, at, at any point during the game. Did you did you notice like a difference in in Jackson during the have not week? I know it was a very difficult uh, time for him. Yeah, uh, well, that actually was my HOH week when he was the have not. That was the first week we did the uh, the have nots. And uh, oh yeah, I definitely noticed a difference. He was he was grumpy the whole time. He was uh, 
he had a lot of flatulent flatulent <laughs> everywhere he went uh he was not the most fun person to be around um you know the slop apparently isn't the most fun thing in the world to be on hmm yeah i uh i i, I wonder i wonder about the shower thing if uh if it like uh i don't know how much production can like uh like uh talk about your time in the shower yeah i don't know and uh it seems like there were a whole lot of questionable things that happened in that hoh shower <laughs> this particular season uh yeah i uh did you and, avoid any all stools in the house you know that stool yeah i felt like we needed biohazard tape around it after, after hearing some of the adventures and everything else i i intentionally did not take a shower in that hoh <laughs> shower until i won hoh and not because i had heard anything but just because i felt like i didn't want to do anything until i had earned it so i wasn't going to take advantage of that shower until i was hoh so when i got out got in took a shower man it's fantastic after that i would occasionally go up and use it but yeah i always avoided <laughs> i always avoided that stool and and tried to make sure it was pushed as far into the corner as possible and, and tried not to think about just uh what else may have been been happening in in that shower at, at that point in time but yeah there's uh there's no camera that i know of that, that points into the shower and so uh, who knows what may or may not be happening there whether it's guards to romantic interludes or or eating forbidden foods i I don't know, and I don't want to know. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's at the end of this week. It's uh, it's the infamous day forty four. Um, Sam had made a pitch early, the the day before, uh, throwing Christy under the bus. A lot of Sam's story lined up with a lot of the things that you had been dropping to Holly and Jackson um, along the way over the last week or so because of what Christy had told you. Yeah. Um, and so things were clicking. Jackson actually wanted to keep Sam at that point, but they couldn't because Kat knew Holly. Um, and so oh, I didn't realize that was. Yeah, he, right. he, he was pushing hard. He was like, no, we need to keep Sam. Um, but Holly was like, oh, I wish I had put up Nicole because if I had, then Nicole could go. But oh. it's Kat up on the block, so I can't get rid of Kat. Um, and so, <laughs> so Jackson actually went to Jack um, and he let Jack know about everything he learned about Christy. Um, little did he know, Jack was actually closer with Tommy than he was with Jackson. So Jack went to Tommy. Tommy tried to put a stop to it. He yeah. tried to uh, use the, the good old uh, scapegoat strategy, said, uh, no, it's all Cliff's fault. Don't listen. Um, and uh, that did not work, though, because, uh, again, everything lined up with what Kat was saying, you were saying, Sam was saying. Yeah. So it was the next morning that Jackson talked to Jack and he, he told Jack, we, we know Kat's not lying because she knows Holly um and jack freaked out he told tommy tommy freaked out because uh you know if anyone knows how dangerous that is in the game it's gonna be tommy yeah yeah uh, <laughs> so tommy tries to flip the vote uh but ultimately it fails um also uh, i i forgot of course to put in your contribution to this um a big part of of what what clicked for holly was her going to you um and she really needed to confirm with you because she had been talking with you about christy and you'd been you know, again dropping those hints she yeah. asks you like can we trust christy essentially and you you this is your this is your chance and you uh took the opportunity to be like you can't uh she uh, she told me that jackson was the uh rogue vote yeah. um she, you know she 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 says all this she said all this crap about you did did you did you sense that this was like your opportunity were you waiting for the for a moment to drop this information yeah i uh i don't know if it's so much waiting for a moment but i had the information and i i saw the cracks developing i, I figured this was a uh an opportune time to maybe drop a few items here and there and, uh, and let people start pointing their, their guns at each other and, and go after each other in the group instead of those of us who were outside the group. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, that really solidified it for Holly. Things blow up. The flip is stopped. Sam goes. Did you have a preference here between Sam and Kat at this point? I mean, I know you were aligned with Kat. Yeah, I, it was tough because I didn't want either one of them to go. Sam and I were tight. Sam and I had tried to, to play, I think, a little bit of a similar game in terms of getting within the groups and all. 
Uh, at one point, Nicole and I even had said, well, maybe, maybe we do stick with Sam just because I felt like Sam was a little bit more stable. Uh, cat could, could tend to be a little, little high, little low in terms of emotions from day to day. And, uh, and I already knew that cat had gone and, and talked to people. She, she, she oftentimes, as soon as she got suspicious of something, seems like she'd be talking to people and asking questions and spilling the beans. So uh, I, I did feel like Sam was, was a little bit more stable perhaps, but I felt closer to Kat from an alliance standpoint, uh, especially with regards to, to Nicole also. So at, at the end, as much as I hated it, probably Sam w was a bit more of a preference for me to send out the door. Yes. Yeah, so Sam goes... And then Jess wins the next HOH. You make sure to get in her ear about, like, uh, we got to make sure we do the right thing here. Um, yeah. It doesn't take too much convincing, though. Jack and Jackson uh, end up on the block. Uh, you guys need to work with Jackson and Holly. You know that, uh, that you know, they uh, are kind of being split from the group at this point. Um, it's a very similar HOH to your initial one, where it was Nick and, and ha Nick and Bella at first. Now it's Jackson and Holly. Um were you concerned at all about these initial nominations, though, with Jackson and Jack on the block that either maybe the vote could flip and Jackson could go home or more dangerously, the power that you left in the game uh, might be used in a similar way um, to uh, to potentially, you know, mess things up? Yeah, I, I was concerned about that. It came down to the veto competition. And so uh, when we did that, that tossed in space. I was definitely, you cheer everyone on outwardly, but I was definitely cheering against uh, Jack and, uh, and Mickey uh, on that competition because if one of them had won, then sure, it's a possibility that, that Christy could have then used her power and, and pulled off. Uh, I, I, I knew that she wouldn't pull, pull Mickey off, but if, uh, if, if she wanted to pull Jack off, then that was certainly a, a, a possibility. So, yeah, that was a that was a huge fear on my part, and and fortunately, you know, uh, Jessica did what I couldn't do, and she also won the veto, and was able to keep those nominations the same, which negated Christie's power completely. Did you consider trying to get two of the you know remaining four six shooters on the block instead of having one off the block, so that you would have the numbers regardless of whether Christie used her power? Uh. Explain that again. I'm not sure I follow that. <laughs> so the what what sort of part of what made it dangerous was that um, if uh, if say you know if any of Christy, Tommy, Sis, or Jack won the veto, Christy could use her power uh, to put up you or Nicole or yeah. whoever um, up next to Jackson, and then they would decide between Jackson and you uh, or Nicole or whoever which of them went home. Whereas if Jack and say Tommy or Sis were on the block. Uh, no matter what happens with the veto, no matter who Christy decides to put up, you guys still have the numbers theoretically to uh, to evict whoever remained on the block. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't think of it while I was in there. I may have even been that more uh, fearful of what was going to go on. No, I. Uh, I think when I went up and talked to Jessica right after she she won, she she very much wanted it to be her H O H. Mm -hmm. She. She didn't really take a, a, I mean, you said that I was getting in her ear, but I felt like she really wasn't taking a lot of input from me or, or anyone else. And so I, I don't know that I had a lot of say in the matter. The fact that, that Mickey and Jack were going up, that, that was enough for me. And just to hope that that veto uh, went the right direction. Obviously, Jack is who I wanted to go home. By that point, Mickey was showing enough of, of his competition and all of that that even if if he had gone home over Jack, that wouldn't have been my preference, but it it wouldn't have broken my heart either, uh, because I was seeing how how powerful he was in these competitions. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Jess wins the veto. You're gonna be able to send Jack home. He tries to campaign to you in particular because you're a deals man. He tries to offer you a deal, uh, you know, with a three three or four weeks of safety um, and like different stipulations. It was very funny. You talked to Nicole about it. Uh, her response was, "What is he God?" <laughs> yeah, yeah that, you know, and I'm sure because I'd made the deal with Christy for two weeks of safety, he assumed that I was all about trying to stay safe until the end. I, I get that, but. There's a couple of things. One, three or four weeks of safety. That's a lot to be promising anyone, you know, whether I could 
count on him or anyone else in that group to actually go through with it. I, I didn't know that for certain. But beyond that, that safety was going to be at the expense of Cliff's Angels and everyone else who wasn't part of that group. And I wasn't willing to sacrifice all of them just in exchange for me lasting a little bit longer into this game. I really didn't want to I wasn't playing to be, come in sixth place or, or however I would have ended up by, by getting a, a few more weeks of protection. So, uh, yeah, there wasn't any way I was going to do that, do that deal. I, plus the fact he was, he was the one I wanted out initially. I was so disappointed that I didn't get him out during my HOH. There wasn't any way I was going to let him slide during a second nomination and not have him going home. Yeah, were you concerned uh, about like uh, leading him on for so long? You know, ultimately, Sis was really pissed at you. Uh, you know, it was very fresh in her mind come the next uh, HOH, and she was really trying to make you the target when Tommy won. I'm sure she was. I could tell it when I told her. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I had very mixed feelings. On the one hand, when he told me he was offering me three or four weeks. I didn't want to just laugh at him and say, well, there's not a chance in hell I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, I, I did want to play him along a little bit so there was less time for them to try to spin other things and, and maybe put other deals together that could potentially impact myself or Nicole or anyone else in the group. So, uh, yeah, I let him on a little bit and said, well, I'm trying to consider it. And I tried to negate that a little bit by, by also saying, I will let you know I'm not going to make this some big surprise in, in the eviction. And so I did come to him. You know, the day of eviction and told him and told sis and uh, yeah i could tell and uh, the way sis responded of that she was she was not happy uh at that point in time i didn't know how much of it was because i strung them along and how much of it was just because i was sending him home in the first place but yeah she wasn't real happy with me yeah uh so tommy wins the next hoh and he is going to put you and cat on the block and this is this is tommy's opportunity it's his one opportunity he really didn't want to lose to you he always <laughs> he, he knew that you were a threat he didn't want to have he he knew that you were dangerous but cat was also very dangerous she might know holly she was also the bridge between cliff's angels and holly and jackson at that time um and so it did make a lot of sense for him to take cat out of the game he was targeting cat over you but he wouldn't have been upset if you had gone home instead. Um, but there's a bit of a wrench that's thrown in that plan when America's field trip happens. Uh, and Very that was a, a brief period of, of hope, I think, for you guys. Well, and the worst situation was that when that field trip came up uh, and, and the three people that were nominated, we spent a lot of time saying, is this good or bad? You know, one person gets safety, but then you've got a punishment and someone's, someone's nominated. And we weren't sure whether that was a gift that we were getting or, or something that the, the the American public was punishing you with by giving you that vote. Um, but it was kind of a worse situation for me when Mickey won that competition because I had thought that there was a chance that, that he would be a bigger target for Tommy uh, and, and that he could have been up uh, instead of myself. Well, once Mickey was safe, then it didn't surprise me at all that, that I then found myself on the block. Mm. So uh, it's around this time your relationship with, with Nick is paying off. And again, your reputation for being good to your word is paying off because uh, Nick wants to try and merge his two groups yeah. together. You and Nicole with uh, Tommy, Christy, and Sis. And he wants to put together this six deal. Uh, it's a new six. And, um, and Christy and Sis feel like, you know what? We re really trust Cliff for his word. If he promises us, if he gives us his word, then we're good. Uh, we'll feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, and so Nick approaches you about it. You are, of course, on board because it's going to help you stay in yeah, the I'm game. Yeah, stay alive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you have Nicole's vote, or at least it seems so at first. So it seems like you should be good. However, Kat is campaigning a lot obviously tommy wins the veto in this time takes christy off that's not going to go anywhere um but uh cat is going to campaign she really makes an emotional plea to nicole which actually gets nicole starting to feel like oh, i feel bad for cat she's actually starting to consider keeping cat at least uh to jess um and then you have a conversation with her where you explain this deal and she doesn't love it because it excludes Jess and she feels bad about that. So uh, 
she actually tells Jess about the deal, which then yeah. blows everything up. So I don't know how much of that like you you've you've like heard about yet. Um, well, yeah, I heard a little bit later. Nicole said that she actually was the one that told mm-hmm. Jess. At the time, I thought Jess had just overheard some discussions. Yeah, that was the excuse. Outside the RV. And I'm laying in bed outside in uh, laying in bed outside the RV, and I don't remember who it was that woke me up. Said, uh, "There's a lot of yelling and screaming in the boat room. You may want to, uh, you may want to come listen." It's like, oh my gosh, uh, middle of the night kind of arguments never go well. But uh, yeah, no, I I get it. And uh, yeah, when Nick came to me with that deal. I really didn't want to turn against Mickey and Holly necessarily. And I knew that I'd be the low, low person on the totem pole with this new group with Tommy. But when someone comes to you and says, Hey, if you're willing to join this group, we'll, uh, uh, we can protect you and keep you from going home this week. I wasn't going to say no, because I really wasn't sure where the votes were. I, I, Kat had her hands in so many different groups. It seems like in terms of talking to people and all, and I just wasn't sure what maybe was going on with that. So yeah, I was going to hope for it. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it turned into quite the conversation after that. Yeah, there was a lot of talk at this time about you and, and your word, and uh, that if you had given your word to stay true to this deal for longer than just one week, if it had been a final six deal, would you have been willing to betray that? Because obviously that's not a great group for you if you get all the way down to six. Um, yeah. So what, what, what's the answer to that? Well, here's the, the beautiful part about that deal. Tommy had promised maybe Holly, maybe Mickey. I'm not sure who he had promised someone that he wasn't going to be forming any kind of alliances or groups while he was HOH. So when they approached me, they said, look, we are not forming. All we're doing is promising you safety at this point uh, and, and getting you to promise that you will go off after Mickey and Holly this week. Once this week is over, then let's talk about forming an alliance with us six and but it's not happening right now it's only happening after the hoh we're not doing anything now i said hey that works for me that means i don't have to promise to be in this group of six or anything else until after the eviction vote is held and i'm safe so uh would i have honored that uh i probably would have honored going after mickey and holly uh but as far as joining that final six no, I, I didn't really want to do that. Uh, I would have reevaluated uh, once we had the vote and, and waited to see who won the HOH and made my decisions based on that. But I didn't feel any obligation. I hadn't promised that I would join that six or do anything other than going after Mickey and Holly if I won this very next HOH. Yeah. Uh, so ultimately, as everything blows up, because Jess just found out about the deal, um, now Kat knows that she's going home. She's blowing up Cliff's Angels. Uh, and, and then she is very upset with you. She says she's disappointed in you. Um, t- tell me about that whole situation. Yeah, I, gosh, it, it, there was, that, that was troubling for me. I, I get that she was upset that, uh, that Jess wasn't being included in this deal. Uh, but unfortunately, what I wanted to tell her at the time, and I couldn't, was that, yeah, Cliff's Angels, we, we were trying to work together, but I had a final two with Nicole well before I had a, a final four or final three with Cliff's Angels. And my ultimate goal was to keep myself safe and to keep Nicole safe. And getting into this group seemed like it guaranteed us a little bit more safety me, going forward. Um, and also, I, I wanted to say that whether – Jess was in this group of six or not didn't mean that I still didn't have some connections to her and that Nicole and I if we were in the group still wouldn't have, still wouldn't have been able to to have some influence on on keeping Jess safe and maybe getting targets pointed elsewhere so yeah I uh it's not that I was throwing Jess under the bus but I was trying to do everything possible possible to protect my game and Nicole's game with the understanding that Again, it, it wasn't an alliance that I'd actually agreed to, and I did have the opportunity, hopefully, if I did participate more with those people to, to keep Jess a little bit safer than, than if I wasn't involved with that group. Yeah, did you try to like? Uh, did you think about trying to like play up the fact that the cat was so mad at you and that, that maybe it would be a, a good thing for anybody that sat next to you in the final two? No, I really didn't. I. Uh... <laughs> I mean, maybe later I did. Yeah, I spent a lot of time later when we got further into the game, when we were talking about jury votes a little bit, saying things like, "Oh man, Cat, you, know, you heard her call me out in the uh, in the eviction speech. That's 
I hope, and I didn't say so much about jury votes, but just saying, I'm afraid Cap may never talk to me again when we get out of this house, hoping people would also assume that it, it had to do with jury votes if we got to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so Cat's evicted. You're safe. Jackson wins the next HOH. Uh, now you had just made a deal to work yeah. against him. So you had to do some big damage control. Um, and this is really, you know, this for the next few weeks, it's really just about really you, you versus Tommy in the sense of like who can get Jackson most on board with them. Um, and, and you really ended up coming away the, the winner in that battle, um, you know, doing this damage control with Jackson, uh, getting him on your side, pulling Nicole in as well. Um, it's, it's, tell me more about that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Um, yeah, it was tough from a damage control standpoint. Uh, I just made this promise. I went to Mickey as soon as the competition was over and said, Hey, I just want you to know, I made an agreement to go after you. I, I did it to stay on the block. I, I hope you understand, uh, understand that if you put me on the block, then, um, then, you know, I, I, I understand, I get it. And, uh, he said, no, I, you're not my target. You know, if you go on the block, then, then so be it. And, um, uh, but, but he really didn't identify me as, as the bigger target at, at that point in time, which was fine with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Jackson goes after Christie, uh, which leads to the whole taco Tuesday situation. Um, but really for the next few weeks, it's, it's a lot of you getting in with Jackson and Holly, solidifying the final four, um, and kind of like uh, allowing them to call the shots in terms of who goes home. Um, was like, what was, was your game plan just to, just to, to hang in there and, and hope that the, uh, the shot, uh, a shot would be taken at Jackson and Holly at some point? Yeah, that was it. I, uh, I came into this game really thinking I was going to have, as I said earlier, have someone that was a bigger target than myself that could win some challenges that I could support. But eventually someone would come after them and kind of free free them up get them out of the game well he was such a strong competitor that, that just never seemed to be happening and so uh yeah it was just me trying to to survive and, and let him take the shots and hoping someone would get a chance to sh take a shot at him later yes well ultimately it comes down to the double eviction uh that you and nicole have to make the decision which which side are you going to side with uh jackson holly or uh Christy and Tommy, um, you make the decision to side with Jackson Holly. Nicole is going to win that HOH. She's going to, to target Christy. Um, that's another one of the decisions that people question. Is this the right call? Did you go with the right pair? Um, can you tell me more about that call? Yeah, it, it was funny. That week, everyone's pointing fingers at each other, and we're all telling one couple that we're going after the other couple telling the other couple that we're going after the other one and everyone's doing the same thing uh at the end you know from my viewpoint i felt much closer connection to mickey and holly than i did to tommy and christy uh, i knew that both of them had been targeting had been targeting me and so uh i, I was really afraid that um uh, sorry I was afraid they were going to come after me uh, very quickly if the two of them were still left in the game. With Mickey and Holly, I felt I had a little more protection from them. And the other part of it, too, was that I really – we all were anticipating a lot more mental uh, competitions coming up versus physical competitions uh, towards the end. And so I knew how strong uh, – uh, Tommy and, and Christy were on the middle competitions. I'd watch them studying that memory wall, the, the dates they had down perfectly. And so, yeah, no, it, we talked back and forth, but Nicole and I were both on board with, with getting out Christy and Tommy as opposed to, uh, as opposed to Mickey and Holly at that point in time. Did you consider throwing that double eviction HOH and, and letting, you know, Tommy or, or Christy win? Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, we, we both consider that and just letting them take shots at each other. But Nicole wanted to win an HOH so bad. Uh, we both were thinking that we wanted to try to build resumes as much as possible. And we decided we're just going to go for it and, and let us have control over the action uh, at the end rather than just leaving it up to someone else. Mm -hmm. Plus, the other thing, too, is I'd already heard that 
Tommy and Christy and Mickey and Holly had some kind of an agreement with each other. I didn't know how solid it was or not, but I knew they had talked and potentially had an alliance. Last thing I wanted to do was have one or the other win, and then they target Nicole or myself. Yeah. Hey, uh, 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 Taryn, can I, can I go offline for just a second and talk to you? Um, sure. Um, so, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna shut down the, uh, the live stream and, um, we're gonna, uh, finish, finish up, uh, audio only is what we'll, what we'll do. Um, so, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us live. And, um, sorry about that guys. No, it's all, it's all right. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys later.